what we now understand is that um, the way that, that entrons and exons are recognized in human genes is, by, is through what we call exon definition. Um, and that is that even though the introns are of highly variable length, going from about a few hundred nucleotides up to tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of nucleotides, the exons tend to be very much uniform in their length. The average exon, as we said, was 123 nucleotides, but they vary in length from t about 25. There's some a few, sh a few shorter, you know, there's exceptions to every rule. But in general, 25 to 300 nucleotides is the size of an internal exon in a human gene. And so um, what the human splicing machinery looks for is a good, a good match to the consensus branch site and 3' splice site, followed with um, 25 to 30, 300 nucleotides by a cons match to the 5' splice site. And so this then defines an exon. But even with that distance information between a 3' splice site and a downstream 5' splice site, that's still not enough information to uniquely identify an exon. And it's also not enough information to allow for alternative splicing of that exon. So in addition to the consensus sequences, there are also other sequences called exonic splicing enhancers or splicing silencers. So these enhancers or silencers um, can be either in the exon over here or they can be in introns. And if they're in introns, they're called intronic splicing enhancers or intronic splicing silencers. So that would be the ESE, ISE, ESS, and ISS sequences. Now these sequences tend to be clustered around exons and um, they are recognized by a set two different kinds of proteins in general. And these proteins are called the uh, SR and the HNRMP proteins. Now, SR proteins are RNA binding proteins that have a C-terminal domain that is rich in arginine serine dipeptides. And HNRMP proteins are another set of RNA binding proteins. They do not have this, this RS uh, region. But in general, the SR proteins tend to, to recognize splicing enhancers. They tend to, to increase splicing. And HNRMP proteins tend to uh, recognize splicing silencers. And so they tend to, to inhibit splicing. And the, it's the balance of the SR and HNRMP proteins that are in a cell um, that determines the splice pattern for any particular RNA. So if they're, uh, you can think very much about splicing decisions being um, made by the decisions as a committee decision. So in addition to the SR proteins and the HNRMP proteins, there's the core splicing machinery, and we're going to talk about that in part two of my talk. Uh, but the core splicing machinery is what's responsible for recognizing the consensus sequences at the splice sites. And then in addition, there, um, at the same time, there would be these SR proteins and HNRMP proteins. And then it is the, the um, conjunction of all these different uh, factors that then makes a decision as to whether or not uh, an exon is going to be utilized or not and, and um, made into to mRNA.